Greetings and bienvenue everyone, I am your esteemed host Wolfless 64 Welcome to my channel and please enjoy the video. I have noticed that many of ye tarnished are not yet subscribed. With that in mind, go ahead and take flame that like button and subscribe for more of my annoying input no one asked for. It means a lot and helps me keep the lights on. With all of that out of the way, let's get it. So I want to open this review by stating several good things that I like about the Shadow of the Earth Tree DLC. Firstly, the Scatter Tree Fragment is an interesting idea. I also love how the Land of Shadows looks. It's very expansive and looks wonderful compared to how the game is like normally. Not to say that the base game isn't beautiful, it's just that there's more to look at in a new coat of paint than there is uh, in the older game. Hell, even on my crappy little L laptop here that I normally use, it looks pretty stunning. I also love that there are new enemy types that we need to play around, as well as old enemies being brought back. I also love how the lore is expanded on with new boss fights that expand the story very well. My go-to example being the Rolana boss fight. Renala has a sister now, which is awesome, and I don't hate the idea outright because it just makes sense. As well as the Radon and Mikolas fight, which is a very impressive challenge while also being an awesome callback to the Lothric and Lorien fight from Dark Souls 3. Now on to the nitty gritty where I would like to state all the things that I genuinely did not enjoy about the DLC whatso fucking ever. Firstly is the amount of damage everything in the DLC does. I understand the dev team has given us an item called the Scatter Tree Fragments that I mentioned before, and we can activate at a Sight of Grace to bolster our defenses and the damage we give to enemies in the DLC exclusively. My question is, however, why do we need something like this? From Software explained that we would need to at least be in the upper levels of metal builds, which is 150 to get through the DLC comfortably. Sure, I could level up to help mitigate that, however, I have seen another content creator named Tap at level 337 taking the same damage as I did at meta while we were both fighting Rolana's fight. What would be the point of leveling up if that's the case, even with the Scatter Tree Fragments? On top of that, the Fragments don't mean anything once you get into Insa's castle. I mean, most enemies can two-tap most of my HP in one move that can roll catch as well as move the soldier forward at least 10 feet. Which is bullshit, but whatever. Rolana can also cleave your HP with most of, if not all, of her moves. Unless you block with a shield the size of a goddamn person. This is all while ignoring the new consumables that should also be used to negate the new damage spikes, known as the pickled livers. I wouldn't have issues with all of this if the items were more abundant. I mean, uh, more gives you two of almost every single pickled liver when you first meet him, but that's at near Bellroot Tower. I also needed to look up a walkthrough guide on where to find all the scattered fragments, which is just obscene because there's 50 of them, and most of them were after Ensis Castle, where I would happily argue that you would need them the fucking most. If I sound pissed, this is why. I'm also happy to point out that by the time most people reach Rolana's boss fight, they would only have one or two fragments at minim and at minimum two spellproof pickled livers. That's being really fucking generous. Sure, people could just grab it with a mod that gives everything. I know I sure as shit did. However, even with max fragments, I was still getting clapped. I can understand making things difficult to challenge players, but this isn't just a skill issue. It's a, this is, this bitch hits like a freight train with a long-winded combo that can chase you down with utter ease kind of issue. Another issue I have with the damage balancing is the new hefty pots. With mods that can allow everyone to craft all the pots that they would ever need, the damage of these things needs to be nerfed by a lot. I have had my HP at level 30, which is 800 HP mind you, knocked down to about 10 points with one throw of a hefty pot. This brings me to another great side point, that the Palm Blast Ash of War needs to be reworked. As seen in the footage below, the Ash of War Palm Blast has quite literally all the hyper armor. I mean, Jesus, I can tank way too much f damage with this fucking move, and it hits like a DLC boss. Seriously, it takes an Avatar's or Tree Slam or a Dragon Flame attack to knock me out of it. As seen here at meta, I had an entire bitch fucking in the Dry Leaf set knock me out of my attacks and cleave half of my HP down with one Palm Blast strike. Sure, it was a rolling attack, but still, she tanked way too much of this like nothing was happening. And she hit me from like a mile away. I was nowhere near her. 
In addition to all the complaints listed above, I must firmly state that the game continues to crash during loading screens when you are either fast traveling, being summoned into the world as a cooperator, or being summoned into a world as an adversary. From Software needs to do literally anything to curtail this problem. However, I don't know if it's just them or if it's my laptop issue. It feels like they don't fully understand that the average player doesn't have a game setup equivalent to their most optimal playstyle of being able to run the game at 40K, 4K graphics in ultra high def or whatever, mostly because new gaming hardware is extremely expensive, especially in the console sphere. I mean, good God, once you buy a PlayStation 5, a PlayStation 6 is a right around the corner and it's inevitable. Just as um, it is getting more expensive to buy new upgrade material for any kind of laptop or PC or desktop, what have you. I don't know, again, if this is just a uh, me problem or if other people are having issues with this, but the game has crashed a lot and some of my friends are also complaining about the crash issues. I would also like to severely address the issue of input reading in this game because for some weird reason more often than not any input you put into the game just sometimes more not sometimes far too frequently just disappears like i'll press roll i'll know i'll have pressed roll and then for some weird reason my character just stands there face tanking everything or if I try to roll, it just doesn't go through because I get staggered out of it way too easily. So poise is definitely an issue. At least in PvE. I understand that bosses like Rolana here are the size of a fucking basketball hoop and they should deal poise damage as such. But goddammit, does it feel like it's too fucking long. And with the latest addition of the DLC in Elden Ring and its patches, the... Um, before and after that, I also have to point out that the menu movement feels just as clunky as it does in Dark Souls 3, a game that came out eight entire years ago. So why in the name of the Imperium of Man does it feel just as bad if not worse in a brand new game like Elden Ring? Elden Ring is only two years old, but it feels, as mentioned before, like drinking the HP and FP flasks takes way too long. I have died so many times trying to get through the lengthy drinking animations only for an enemy to wind up their own lengthy and heavy hitting attack to just outright nullify the ability of me healing like at some sometimes it just feels like healing is completely pointless at the best of times or just not an option at the worst of times and don't even get me started on their peer-to-peer -peer system <sighs> With all of that out of the way and in mind, I would like to at least wrap this up with some good old fashioned uh, to actually say about this game. I do actually enjoy the DLC. I do enjoy the new weapons, the new movesets. I just wish the damage could be toned down severely because getting two tapped by one person that's the same level or around the same level as you is just utterly ridiculous. I do not agree with the severe damage spike that everything has and i know it's probably just a well you have a skill issue problem that every negative person in the comment section is probably gonna hit me with when they see this video with all of that in mind i know i keep saying that so often in all of these commentary videos i would like to point out that the dlc is breathing new life back into elden ring because at least for me with 4,000 plus hours in the game it's actually extremely boring now so the dlc is a good way to spice things up i just wish there were more fixes for what's happened um yeah the new additions for the weapons and consumables is groundbreaking for the soulsborne franchise as a whole and it allows for more flexibility but once again it offers more rigidity players now only know how to spam one move from the dlc weapons and spells because it just hits so frequently and so hard that you you don't really need to do anything else and it just for a lack of a better word it or lack of a better term rather it just it just locks the pvp into this boring cycle of dodge attack dodge attack dodge attack if they're feeling you know particularly spicy uh. and 
there are so many other controls on your keyboards, on your controllers, what have you. There's so many more combinations. There's infinite amounts of com combos you can do, but now is once again boiled down to I can one tap everyone, and I'm a I'm I'm so good for doing it. Bravo, fucking. What, you want a round of applause for that? Damn, you're so fucking cool. You watched a five minute Reddit clip on how to be an overpowered douchebag and play like a piece of shit. Fuck me. Back to the positives, goddammit. The world is large and expansive, but it holds too little until you get into the Skadu Altus. I do have to agree with this point, even if I've made it. Um, I don't really enjoy the gravesite planes. It's kind of boring. Until you get into Ensis, the good good lord Bellrat, uh, Shadow Keep, hell after Shadow Keep, even exploring the God damn I'm gonna I hate myself for saying this, but even exploring the Abyssal Woods was kind of fun. I did not enjoy the enemies that you need to parry and they have a really shit parry window before you need to hurt them. I think that's stupid and if you're not careful they will one tap you. I don't care what anyone says on the dev team, that does not need to be a fucking enemy type. That just does not need to be an enemy type. Again, back to the puzzle. Fuck me. Um, yeah, I do hope that all my issues will be resolved. Obviously, they will be potentially addressed. Primarily, the weapons and spells being nerfed is what I want mostly, but that's pretty par for the course for um, from software games. Usually it'll happen fairly soon within the next, I'm looking at a watch, a month or so here. Uh, once everybody's kind of tuckered out of the DLC or beaten it several times over. I know they've already released a new patch that's lowered the damage of certain moves, but it doesn't feel like it's severe enough because Swift Strike, I think it was, or Swift Slash, still can be spammed like no one's fucking business, which I think is ridiculous, and it still does way too much damage despite the nerf. Subsequently supposing to uh, fix that problem. I know the Blood Fiend arm also has a reduction of blood buildup, but a hundred hole bleed buildup doesn't really entirely make a difference when you're still, you know, hammering the piss out of somebody and you have, what, 50? arcane i think i have 60 arcane on my character and i can still you know clap cheeks with the best of them uh yeah i i again i gathered that all of that's going to be addressed potentially and nerfed that irrelevance like everything else but even in the base game a lot of things need to be nerfed like a lot of the mage weapons i'm looking directly at you moonvale you need to be nerfed because at 60, at 60 fucking uh, intelligence, I can cleave people's health, health in half. Hell, I can cleave people's HP in half with my fucking Dark Moon Greatsword. That also needs to get nerfed. I'm sad to say. It's one of my favorite uh, magic weapons, but it's for that exact reason that it needs to get nerfed. Not the favoritism part, the, uh, the pure damn that you can torque out of that little thing. It's just ridiculous. Uh... I guess for most, for the most part, I would recommend this DLC. It's very fun. It adds a, several hours worth of new content and new replayability to the game. I would recommend it, and it's great. It's great for forty dollars. I just wish that my underlying, the underlying issues I have experienced, were. Uh, I don't even think they can be fully fixed, and even if they can be, they probably won't be until the next. From software game. Uh, God damn it. They'll need to stay positive. Again, I would recommend this game to anybody who is a Soulsborne fan. I wouldn't recommend Elden Ring. I would recommend Elden Ring, actually. Scratch that. I would recommend Elden Ring as a good starting point for most people. Uh, if, if this is your kind of thing, the DLC is a little bit more of a. Once you've completed the base game, about four or five times that's a new challenge for you if you if you're up for that shit but yeah i know that um yeah this game is actually kind of amazing and i'm surprised i'm still playing it about two years later almost three years later now in fucking next february is when it'll be three years that this game has uh reached its 
third year anniversary. And I know I've stated a lot of negatives earlier on in this video, but that's because I know this game can be so much better. And I know that From Software really can make their game more fair and balanced and, you know, player friendly. I shouldn't even say player friendly. They, um, well, I guess I can make another video about that where I gripe about the PvP system. I could definitely make several videos about that. I have made several videos about that. Uh, yeah, that'd be a video for next time, but all in all, this DLC is great. The boxes are incredible, diverse, and very intricately made. I do love them so much, and I can't wait to see if anything else gets added to it. Probably not. I think this is the only DLC for Elden Ring, which is fine by me. I wouldn't mind it too much, but uh, yeah. With all of that, I'd like to for watching this video until the very end it does mean a hell of a lot to me and i'll catch you guys in the next one
Batman. Naka, a curse upon thee. 